Uh, oops. <laughs> oh no. Let's have some fun. I am going to build a model of the marble machine. I want to begin by building a stage from this big black cutting board. Let's start by making myself. I want to make a model of myself in scale 1 to 10, so I become 19 centimeters high. And here's a cool trick to transfer my body shape onto the foam board. I'm tracing the high contrast image, and then I'm adding graphite on the backside of the paper, and then I can trace it onto the foam board. A huge thanks to 43 new Wintergatan backers. Your support makes it possible for me to keep chasing my dream. Thank you so much. I have myself in scale 1 to 10 and now I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to try to use this circle cutter to make some drums. Oh yes, <laughs> nice! But why cardboard? I'm teaching myself a better design process and instead of spending hours in CAD, I can make much faster iterations in cardboard and get an immediate feeling for different design options. This whole exercise is to find placements. So I'm gonna build individual units that I can move around. I made a whole bunch of elements in cardboard and now I can start to experiment with the form factor to see how we can put all these together into a marble machine. First we have myself, kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, ride and crash cymbals and two toms, a Fender jazz bass, this is a full-scale vibraphone. Here's a favorite of mine, this is the carousel instrument rotator from any music music video. So here's a personal favorite, the shaker module. When this wheel spins, this part will pivot back and forth. Just if we want to shake things up. Then we have a normal keyboard that I would play myself, like this. And we also have a glockenspiel. Bling, 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 bling. So then we have the programming wheel. I made this big conveyor belt. This is the control unit. Here's the Hegen drive. We have the flywheel here, and at the top here, we have the flyball governor. As you can see here, in scale 1 to 10, these standard big instruments in scale, even if I really tighten the instruments, we have a 3 meter wide machine. Then comes the question, why am I using big instruments? On my previous machines, I had very small custom built instruments, and those custom built instruments allowed a very small compact form factor for the machine. So how do we choose between small custom instruments and big standards? We make a weighted decision matrix. Now I'm adding all these numbers and this is 68 for the small custom and for the big standards we have 108. Big standard music instruments wins, which means that the new machine is going to be larger by first principles. Let's start with me in the middle here. Then we have the mechanics and I don't want to design and haul around like 2000 kilo of beautiful mechanics to hide them like this. I want them super visible. I almost want them like this. Wait, is that an idea? What if we put the mechanics like in the middle of everything? Of course the marbles are going there, so let's try to put them behind here. But then of course they are not visible. Let's give them a platform in the back so we can really see them. I forgot we need a conveyor belt somewhere here, so... This is not so fun, you don't see the marbles. Hmm. So this one big conveyor belt I find hard to place and that's why I made the two small ones. Perhaps we can find some solution where each side has their own belt. But I don't want the machine to be spread out. What if we do something like Daft Punk's Pyramid on the Lollapalooza concert? Ooh but inverted. 
That looks kind of cool. Oh. I love this flying V uh, thing. It's so Daft Punk. And then spinning wheels in the background. I think I would like to build this machine actually. Ah! Had a bit too many drinks before the show. Wow, we're ready to tour. <laughs> this is the one, Hannes. We're gonna build this one. What Ooh. do you think? World tour. <laughs> okay. World tour ready. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, this is pretty cool. I love the fact that so much stuff is visible. We see all the instruments playing. We see me controlling the machine. We see me playing. We see the mechanics moving. We see the marbles being picked up, distributed and dropped down. So we see the two uh, marble cycles here. Like the visibility of this setup is absolutely great. Let's check some camera angles. Like imagine here, you see marbles dropping here, marbles going up the conveyor belt while I am, like this is an amazing angle. Check this out. This will be turning, I will be playing music, pulling levers. You see the drums playing, you see marbles here and here. If we go over to this side, there I got to focus on the any music thing and we have still action in the background. The camera angles on this setup doesn't feel bad at all. On big stages we might film it from the backside like this. And look at what I'm seeing in this angle. I feel like a superhero <laughs> standing there controlling my own madness hopefully. So imagine for the music videos like this angle. This is beautiful. This is really beautiful. Of course we can make all these curves better. But imagine like the marbles coming up two ways. Whenever it focuses on me like this, I will be like in front of a wall of mechanics. Like camera coming like this. Booga 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 booga. Hopefully a better song than booga booga. So previously I said the marble machine was 10 meters wide. This machine is now kind of five meters wide. And I think I can squeeze everything together even more. Hannes, what did you say the first time you saw this setup yesterday? Now that is the comeback story of the century right there. So this is just the first setup I made with the model. And we're not going to commit and get locked into this setup. Now let's experiment really freely with some very different setups and see if we can make something even better. I really want the machine to be understood, so when you look at it, you want to kind of understand how it works. So this would, of course, put the beautiful engineering like at front row, really. With the mechanics on the ground, I can also come down on the ground, get down from my high horses. But I don't know, I'm not feeling it. I'm feeling this, actually. I d I'm not feeling this. I think one of the things that I don't like with this is that it doesn't resemble a skeleton clock. I would like the machine to feel like this. My previous machines did, like it's one single machine. And when, if, when we look here, this looks more like an orchestra. Okay, let's try to make a classic version. Whoops, where I'm standing with my back against the audience like I did on the previous machine. So let's try to mimic the previous machines as much as we can now. I don't hate it as much as I thought. <laughs> I don't like that the drums are close to the vibraphone. From a sound perspective, that's really not good. That's why I always wanted as much space as possible between the drums and the vibraphone. Because the harsh sound from especially the cymbals and the snare drum will kill the vibraphone sound in the vibraphone's own microphone. Let's go super minimalistic. A lot of you think that I should make an MVP, a minimum viable product. And the thing is that the minimum viable product is an instrument I want to make music on. So this is what a minimum viable product could look like. It's a more manageable project. However, it's not viable for me because I'm not interested in, <laughs> in making music on this machine. I don't think it's fun. <laughs> in the last video I said delete, delete, delete. And I stand by that. I should delete as much as I can, but I can't delete so much so I don't even want to do the project. The more we remove, the easier it is to finish this project once and for all. And I desperately need to finish this project. But if I remove too much, I'm not interested in finishing it. This whole exercise with the carbon modeling 
is going to help me find where that sweet spot is. And that's the machine I wanna build. I think what's really important design-wise is to make it feel like one compact machine. I think I can make this setup feel like a skeleton clock, especially if we're allowed to make it high, but I don't know if we should make the machine like too high. The ruler is three meters, so we're at 250 now, which is actually more machine X height. So we could go perhaps a little bit higher. I have a sense that I can take this setup and squeeze it together into one single skeleton clock. But I'm still committed to not commit, so I'm just in an explorative phase here. I'm looking at the machine here on the screen. It feels like perhaps there are some better options. I don't like that the mechanics is hidden. I, I, I just want to put the mechanics here, you know? I, I kind of want to like celebrate physics with this machine. It's like, that's what I want. <laughs> I put the camera a bit back. Imagine if you're in a theater with balconies and you're a bit high up, you would have this angle to look at the concert. What an amazing angle. Uh, oops. <laughs> oh no. So a little bit from above like this, you can really see everything. Yeah, something to ponder. Thanks to everyone who supports Vintergatan for making my job possible at all here. And thank you for watching the video. Good luck with everything you are doing. Ciao.